are you filming? It's been really helpful to us to be able to visualize our space in Google SketchUp. Um, I am by no means an expert at the program, but it's helped us a lot, and we thought maybe we could show you how we used it and how it's uh, changed how we've designed the inside of the bus. Hi guys, so I was just uh, making some changes in Google SketchUp to our layout design and got to thinking every time I post one of these, I get a lot of questions, so I thought it'd be maybe good to show a basic tutorial of how you can design your own schoolie floor plan in here. Okay, so I'm opening Google SketchUp and I always get this question, this program is free. So I don't know if there's like some paid features that I'm missing out on, but uh, it works fine for my purposes. When you open it up, you're gonna get this dude standing here, which is great for scale, but um, I don't think we need him. So I'm just gonna select him. I have my arrow tool, select him and hit delete. So the first thing you wanna do is take the measurements of the inside of your bus. Or if you don't have a bus yet, feel free to use our measurements and maybe you can decide if our size bus would be the right fit for you. So this is how I'm gonna start. I'm gonna click this rectangle and I'm just gonna draw any size shape here. Then I'm gonna click down here where it says dimensions and I'm gonna say seven feet, seven inches, comma, 24 feet, 10 inches and hit enter. And there it is, that's, that's how you start. That's the interior size of my bus already for me. Now, this little tool is a rotating tool. It changes the way you can look at it. So if you wanna look at it from the top, you can just click and drag like that. The first time I made one of these models, I made uh, the walls, the walls of the bus with the windows in it and everything, which can be really cool. If you wanna be really precise, you can measure the height of the windows, exactly where the windows are, because that does kind of inform sometimes where you might want a piece of furniture to end or where you might want a wall to be. Um, but over time, I kind of decided the walls got in my way. But I am gonna show you how to do that. Again, rectangle tool is your friend. You just drag this on that line. And if you wanna be precise about it, you have those dimensions down there. Same thing, you can just click and enter. So say I want to change the width of that because right now it's saying that's an eight inch wide wall. Say I want to change that to like, I don't know, five inch, not feet, inches and hit enter. And you see that changed itself. Now here's the really cool part. This is the extrude tool. You click that tool and it highlights that surface of that rectangle you just made. And all you do is drag it up. Now you have a wall. Um, then if you wanna do a window, you go back to the rectangle tool and, and where you want a window, you just draw it. Go back to the extrude tool, push it out until it turns sp speckled. And then that punches out a window. This is back to my revolve tool, and you can see that that's a hole all the way through the wall. Pretty simple stuff. One of the most important things in this program that uh, I kind of ignored when I was first using it, and it caused me a lot of trouble down the road, is not grouping my items. If you don't group your items when you want to go to make changes, it's a pain. So how do you group an item? You take the arrow and you drag over the whole thing. So say you want to group the floor and the wall together. You select the whole thing by dragging, you right click, and you say make group. So now that's always together. I can move this whole thing now. All right, so next, say you want to design your own dresser. Again, you can just drag your shape. If you want, you can change the dimensions. Right now I have it at two feet. We'll pretend it's three feet, hit enter, and that changed it. You use your extrude tool, drag it up. And if you want that to be a precise height, again, you can change the height you extruded it. So we'll say it's three feet again, enter. And you see that raised it up to exactly three feet. 
Now, say you wanted to pretend there's a, a drawer on there. I just draw a little rectangle, use the extrude tool, and pull it out slightly. So, you know, really basic. And you can make these line up if you want, but. Again, it's really important to group things. So now that you already have one grouped item, it makes things a little trickier, but it's still not hard. So, you see when I dragged over this, because I didn't drag over the whole thing, see that would select both things. It only selected that, so I can say make group. Sometimes you're gonna run into things where you have to select more than one thing, but it's easy. So, I have both things selected. All I have to do now is hit shift and click that and it deselects that group. And now I'm only selected on these shapes, right click, make group. And now this guide can move. So say you wanted, actually wanted this facing a different direction. So I'm using this tool called the move tool. If you hover over it, you'll see this circle show up and then you can just change the direction. Um, you'll see that it's now going through the wall, which you probably don't want. You can just use that move tool again and have it just like that. All right, say you wanted to, I'm going to put that back how it was. Say you wanted now to add some pizzazz to this guy. You want to add like a wood texture or something. So click it again, right click, edit group. Now you go to the paint bucket tool and you'll get this great little window. It's got colors you can pick from, textures, gradients, um, but up here with the brick, you can choose metal, stone, roofing, tile. There's a lot of options. I'm gonna choose wood and then I can just color each surface how I think it should be. Say I want the drawer faces to be different. I can rotate this with that rotate tool up there and get those edges that I couldn't reach before. Oh, and I just selected off of that to deselect that group. And it's still a group, so you can still move that whole piece of furniture together. Okay, say now you wanted to make an interior wall to divide up, say, a bathroom or something. Same basic idea, rectangle tool, draw it out, extrude tool, pull it up, select tool, the arrow, select all that, right click, make group. Now I can right click edit group, use the paint bucket, you could do something funky water wall you know because everybody needs that in a bus and then arrow tool select off of it and you're not in isolation mode anymore all right so this part is the coolest part of google sketchup it blew my mind so up here, there's a box, and it's called the 3D Warehouse. And as long as you're connected to internet, you can click that. And you can search um, uh, kitchen cabinets, uh, MacBook Pros, um, uh, chairs, bar stools. I mean, pretty much anything you could think of. So let's say I want, I'm thinking about using like an Ikea kitchen cabinet. Let's see what they've got. So 
So they have like full kitchen build outs, but that's a little fancier than what we need here. Okay, Ikea Olafstorp. Let's try that guy. All right, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna load it directly into your model? Click yes. And then you can just place that guy right in there. It's already grouped, which is great. So you can move it, put it right next to our giant dresser we made. All right, there's something else too. So say you made this, but you, you don't wanna totally start from scratch. You just wanna edit it. So again, right click, edit group, and you can change the size of it. I know that looks weird. You can just push it back. You could uh, use the rotate tool over here and make it a little narrower there if you want. So yeah, like it's really not that hard. It's a lot of fun to play with actually. And you can get crazy with it. Like in that 3D warehouse, you can uh, download a plate of breakfast food or something, or you can download people to put in there so you can get a sense of, you know, is there gonna, enough, gonna be enough room for me to walk around? It's a really excellent program and it's helped us a lot to visualize our space and feel confident in our build. So having that program, which is free and pretty easy to use, um, has made it to where we could make choices before we got in here. And a lot of those changes are coming to fruition in here. And it's really exciting to have been able to visualize it first and then build it.